It has been a while since I appeared on camera for a normal math lesson, but that's what we're doing today as we continue our discussion about tournaments, transitive tournaments specifically. Today, we're gonna prove that a tournament is transitive if and only if it has no cycles. So transitive tournaments are like the trees of the tournament world, since tree graphs don't have cycles either. So pretty cool. If you need a quick recap about transitive tournaments or tournaments specifically, I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons introducing both topics. But as a quick recap right now, a tournament is a direct graph with exactly one arc between each pair of vertices and a tournament is transitive if it follows what you might think of as the transitive property traditionally so we say a tournament is transitive if any time uv and vw are arcs of the tournament we also have that u W is an arc of the tournament. So if U is adjacent to V and V is adjacent to W, then U is adjacent to W. And as we'll prove today, not having cycles is intimately linked to this transitive property for tournaments. The proof is pretty straightforward, so I definitely recommend giving it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. The first direction, since this is a biconditional statement, the first direction we're gonna prove is that if a tournament is transitive, then it has no cycles. This is the more difficult direction. The other direction to prove that no cycles implies the tournament is transitive, that one is super easy. But this one is not too bad either. So before we get into the formality of the proof, let me just give you some intuition. Why should cycles cause a problem in a transitive graph? Well, this is gonna end up being a contradiction proof. So let's draw a cycle. Maybe our transitive tournament, we suppose it has a cycle that looks something like this. And maybe we call this vertex here V0. And I suppose I should add direction to these edges since we're talking about tournaments, which are directed graphs. So that's what a cycle might look like in our tournament. Of course, there are some arcs here that we're not drawing because we're just focusing on the cycle. But if our tournament is transitive, what are some of those arcs that have to be here? Well, V0 is adjacent to this vertex, and this vertex is adjacent to this one, so since the tournament's transitive, V0 needs to be adjacent to that vertex. But then we can apply transitivity again. Since V0 is adjacent to this vertex, and this vertex is adjacent to that vertex, V0 needs to be adjacent to that vertex. Continuing that logic, V0 will need to be adjacent to this vertex, and bam, there's your problem. Now we have two arcs going between the same pair of vertices. That's not allowed in a tournament. A tournament can only have one arc and does have exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. So the problem is if you have a cycle in a tournament and that tournament is transitive, transitivity is going to force a bunch of arcs to exist, which will eventually cause a problem like this. And so that's a visual outline of how the proof is going to go. Like I said, this is a contradiction proof. So we'll suppose for contradiction that this is a cycle in our transitive tournament T. So this cycle starts at some vertex V0, then goes to V1, all the way up to some last vertex VK before returning to the vertex V0. Since it's a cycle, that's how it works. Now, in order to make that argument that we were drawing out before, that V0 is going to have to be adjacent to a bunch of the vertices on this cycle, and eventually it's going to have to be adjacent to this vertex, VK, which causes the problem, what we're gonna do is kind of like a mini induction proof. The base case is noticing this. So we'll just write, note that V0 is adjacent to the first vertex on the cycle. The first vertex besides itself, of course. So V0, V1, we know is an arc of the cycle. So we'll write that it's an element of the directed edge set of our tournament T. 
The other thing that we want to prove is that if V0 is adjacent to a vertex on the cycle, then it's also adjacent to the next one. Now, in order to prove that, all we have to do is use transitivity. So notice by definition of the cycle, if we take any vertex VI from the cycle where I can range from zero to less than K, if you take any of those vertices, we know that VI, VI plus one is an arc of our transitive tournament. We have to say that I is less than K, of course, because we use that I plus one, and VK plus one is not a vertex we've defined. But if you take any of these vertices from V zero to VK minus one, they're all adjacent to the next vertex on the cycle. That's how a cycle works. If you take a vertex, there's an arc that will take you to the next vertex. And that's what we can use to exploit the transitivity property here in order to prove that V0 is adjacent to all of these vertices, which is gonna cause the problem. And there that is written out. We know that whenever V0 VI is an arc of our transitive tournament, V0 VI plus one has to be an arc of our transitive tournament by transitivity, because we just established each VI is adjacent to VI plus one. So if V0 is adjacent to VI, then it's gotta be adjacent to VI plus one as well. So we've shown that if V0 is adjacent to a vertex on the cycle, it's also adjacent to the next vertex on the cycle. But we already pointed out that it's adjacent to this first vertex on the cycle after V0. And so we've proven that V0 is actually adjacent to all of these vertices on the cycle, including V K, which is gonna cause our problem. So we've just established that V0, VK is an arc of our tournament, but when we laid out this cycle, we established that VK, V0 is an arc of the tournament, right? To go from VK back to V0 in this cycle, there has to be an arc from VK to V0. So we also know that VK, V0 is an arc, and that, my friends, is the contradiction. Because remember, a tournament has exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. We've just found that there are two arcs between V0 and VK. That was a result of assuming that we had a cycle. And so, in fact, our transitive tournament has no cycles. So if a tournament is transitive, then it has no cycles. The existence of a cycle alongside transitivity forces a bunch of arcs to exist, which eventually cause a contradiction. So let's move on to the other direction where we will prove that if a tournament has no cycles, then it is transitive. And like I said before, this other direction is super easy, so be sure to give it a try yourself. How would we begin to prove that our tournament with no cycles is transitive? Well, we just want to address the definition of transitivity. So we'll say if UV and VW are arcs of our tournament, then what? Well, we want to establish that UW must be an arc of the tournament. If we can prove that, then we will have proven that the tournament is transitive. The key idea then is to remember this is a tournament. So it definitely has some arc between U and W. If it doesn't have the arc UW, then the only other possibility would be that it has the arc WU. However, it can't possibly have WU as an arc because it has no cycles and the arc WU would cause a cycle because then we could go from U to V and then from V to W and then from W back to you. So since our tournament has no cycles, we know that this arc from W to U is not an arc of our tournament. Thus, since there has to be some arc between U and W, since this is a tournament, it must be an arc from U to 
W. And so anytime UV and VW are arcs of our tournament for three vertices UV and W, we must have that UW is an arc of the tournament and thus the tournament is transitive. So there you go. If a tournament has no cycles, then the only arc you'll be allowed to have is the one that forces transitivity. So what we just proved there was that if a tournament has no cycles, then it is transitive. And so in conclusion, a tournament is transitive if and only if it has no cycles. Pretty cool. Small incision